Kenya's development agenda is anchored on the Kenya Vision 2030. This aims at creating a globally competitive and prosperous country with a high quality of life by the year 2030. CAM is at the center of championing development through industrialization. This must be done within the context of circular economy, minimizing environmental degradation, and embracing energy conservation and climate change initiatives. The story of development, I think, and in industrial production historically was linear, which meant we got a raw material, we processed it, we made something, and we forgot about it. The consumer will take it and decide what to do with it. But as the world is growing and we can see the challenges we are getting around uh, climate change, environmental sustainability, and those kind of things, we realize that the resources of the world are not limitless. It's a fun to say that first, uh, you know, manufacturing sector is very key in the economy and uh, it's part of the Big Four agenda. But even as we do that, we promote manufacturing. We need to make sure that uh, the development in that sector is sustainable. Kenya Association of Manufacturers has been leading at the front, uh, ensuring that we develop industry and we are able to create a sustainable future for all our citizens. Through the five-year Green Growth and Employment Programme, the program was meant to work on the issues of resource and energy efficiency and water efficiency within the manufacturing sector in Kenya. The organization has been leading efforts to create an enabling environment for private sector investments in renewable energy and energy efficiency through various programs handled under the Center for Energy Efficiency and Conservation, which was established in 2006. All this type of audits, training academy which we have, a lot of courses which were of course physical, now they are online, but we went online it has impacted a lot. And these are relevant for the companies. It also enhances skill of the person attending. So it has helped a lot in terms of sharing ideas and learning from each other. It has been a huge journey and a big journey towards making sure that our people are also equipped with the skills that are needed to make sure that they are able to spot waste, control it, stop it, and even create value in a process that they are actually supposed to be managing. For the last uh, five years, we've trained more than 15 of our operators, of whom five have uh, graduated to the level of uh, certified energy managers. And we've also had operators who've also grown within their ranks, yeah, in terms of moving up to get into, into senior positions within the technical field. And this basically has made us more competitive. The Center for Energy Efficiency is um, a center that promotes resource efficiency, whether it's energy audit, water and wastewater audits or assessments to promote water use efficiency. We also do waste management. We do capacity building from a technical perspective, so specialized courses in resource efficiency. We also do award schemes and exhibitions to promote and create awareness around the efficient use of natural resources. Within the same area, we do technology linkages so that we can help industries improve and use the right technologies to improve their efficiency. CAM has done a great job because they have been a, uh, CAM has been a great partner to the ministry, especially in educating several stakeholders on waste management through the circular economy uh, courses. The courses that uh, CAM pro uh, uh, provides uh, at the Center for Green Growth and Climate Change, uh, which is at the, the, it, it's, it's the building uh, in Westland. The center is also mandated to create public awareness on energy efficiency, demonstrate feasibility of energy conservation and implementation of bankable projects, provide expertise for promotion and industrialization of energy efficiency and conservation. We de develop a system to decentralize what we call power monitoring system across the process. What I mean is that we have decentralized capacitor banks in all sections to monitor 
energy consumption efficiencies section wise. Before we were using fuel oil to heat our boilers and in the year, few years before we converted into what you call biomass and used the agro waste which of course reduced our cost substantially. Also we did not have to rely on foreign exchange for that because fuel oil comes imported. A lot of companies have uh, started using their roof lines with solar panels so that they can reduce their energy cost. The studies have shown that the energy audits which have been financed by the government, KEM and donors are adding a lot of value in terms of energy saved, in terms of cost savings. On the energy side, what I can say is that we've saved a whooping uh, 7 million uh, kilowatt hours, which is equivalent to 120 Kenyan uh, million shillings. Just to give you perspective of this, is that uh, this amount of energy is equivalent to, you know, powering 3,000 uh, Kenyan homes for one year. The last five years we've saved close to half a billion shillings. In terms of numbers, we've been able to save close to 54 million kilowatt hours of energy. That amount of energy and that quantum is large enough to write a city for some few days, if not months. In order to execute our mandate as the voice of industry, we continue to seek partnerships that build and enhance the capacity of manufacturers to achieve circular economy, energy and water efficiency, and social economic prosperity. In the tea sector, the waste that we generate, we have what we call a waste management system in the company, where waste is segregated into three types. We have the biodegradable, we have the non-biodegradable waste, and then we have the toxic waste. Now, when it comes to organic waste, what we do with this waste is that we compost it. After composting it, we issue it to our, our, the growers. So they come and buy the compo composted waste, and that is money to us. Kakuzi has dams. We do not tap water from the rivers that are flowing in our environment. Now, in fact, this concept, we call this concept stretching the rain. The rain comes for a few months, but for us as Kakuzi, we are able to stretch that rain for a few more months because it means that even when it's not raining, we are still able to do our irrigation. I think circular economy is, is, is key in the sense that we are saying that uh, we need to see that the input of one ministry, the output of another ministry, or what is the West, mm -hmm. is also still important for another industry. Denmark has over the years been a benchmark for Kenya due to their advancements in sustainable technological operations in the manufacturing sector. This is also because Denmark is one of the leading countries embracing and promoting the green growth agenda with the target of adopting a circular economy and attaining a fossil-free economy by 2050. Denmark has uh, cooperated with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers uh, since 2010. Uh, the origin of that cooperation was in uh, the COP15 that was held in, in Copenhagen and the goals that were set there in terms of uh, the climate and uh, the reduction of uh, uh, emissions and uh, the uh, more sustainable use of, of energy and uh, that led to Denmark uh, developing a cooperation with uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers in terms of trying to help uh, come assist uh, companies in Kenya reducing their uh, energy use. Uh, that later developed into also a focus on um, reduction of use of, of water and, uh, and other resources. We want to appreciate the support we have received over the years from Danida and the Royal Danish Embassy uh, because with that support we have been able to plant a seed within industry and we are going to continue into the future with a sustainability journey, with a green growth journey, and ensure that the manufacturing sector in Kenya grows towards becoming a sustainable, resilient manufacturing sector.
With the support of the Danish government's green growth and employment program, CAM has increased its private sector engagement in inclusive green growth. This has further been facilitated by the adoption of sustainable business practices. There has also been an increased investment in energy and resource efficiency policies, legislation and institutions, all of which are supportive of private sector's investments in renewable energy and resource efficiency. In an industry, innovation you have to do. And you have to keep on continuously thinking of your reducing your cost, which, which, which also and help the environment. You see, now everything is becoming environment conscious. I think it speaks volumes that CAM is taking this wonderful uh, initiative to expand uh, the horizons uh, and, going and, and making it more inclusive with green growth. Um, the one major impact Kenya as a country will, tell, will trumpet to the entire world is that we have now embarked on lowering our carbon footprint in all types of solid waste management. We have a target to make sure that you are a carbonless factory and one of the big projects that is going to really help us in that is the biomass project. And in a span of a year or less, we should be able to see our greenhouse gas emissions, again, reducing by 80%. We want to be excellent in environmental management. That's one of the things that we're very much committed to. And as part of that, we're committed to being carbon neutral by 2030. Additionally, we have seen enhanced technological capacity and awareness creation on renewable energy and resources efficiency as well as improved awareness on UN Global Compact Ethical and Sustainable Business Practices. Since the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, in 2015, uh, we've seen the business community uh, begin to embrace sustainability as part of you know, key business strategy. Um, so initially we had a company uh, engagements around corporate social responsibility, but uh, as we move along, we've seen you know, greater adoption um, of the SDGs and the uh, 2030 Agenda as a strategic business engagement for the private sector. Kakuzi is actively involved in uh, reforestation, especially of indigenous trees, um, to ensure that uh, we have an environment uh, that is sustainable. We principally grow tree crops that contribute very significantly uh, to the reduction of carbon emission, and all geared in ensuring that um, uh, SDG number 13 is actualized and realized in, in, in our areas of operations. Promoting the green growth agenda also provides opportunities for generating sustainable employment. CAM continues to engage the government in order to increase job-creating initiatives all geared towards promoting a green economy. What we have also seen is that uh, with the green initiatives in terms of uh, creating new employment of, on this space is that uh, most of our operators who've been uh, within this space in basically looking after energy and uh, water conservation measures, these people have gone through uh, various CAM trainings which has really equipped them and upskilled them. And uh, what you've seen is that now they're able to operate at a higher level. And with this, what it has given us, it has given us an opportunity to backfill their positions. And uh, what we've done as a business is that in the last five years, we've been recruiting our own intern program. This is uh, one area where we require greater collaboration, greater synergy uh, between government and private sector, especially given that we have our aspiration as a nation to grow our GDP and to grow our economy requires that we not only look at domestic markets, but we also focus on international markets. And the international markets now are becoming sensitive to the nature of products that enter into their market. I think uh, many consumers are now aware that they want to be sure that the products they consume have been produced in a manner that is uh, environmentally uh, friendly. Yeah, they, I think the word green is important. We still need very close collaboration with CAM. My call to action first to industries is please embrace these products. They're good for business. They make business sense. 
they'll enhance your opportunities for accessing global markets, even local markets with the consumers being more conscious of green products. It's a huge opportunity for us and not just for us, it is what we are going to be able to leave for our children and our grandchildren and their children as well. By ensuring that we achieve a circular and green economy, Kenya will have transformed for the better to ensure that we safeguard our environment and natural resources for future generations.